as somebody who is an enemy to god is a friend to the world is a is a slave to the devil it's easy for that person to treat other people as if they are not human beings like him if there is something to be taken such a person may not care stepping even on other people's head to grab that which is for his or her own benefit praise the lord church and welcome to this week's worship service here in Mombasa Mission Church we learn to do everything including how we relate with the people for the glory of our lord jesus christ and for his kingdom hallelujah today's message says the mystery to win over evil with good the mystery to win over evil with good and the scripture reading is the book of romans chapter 12 verse 9 to verse 20 one let us pray father god we want to thank you thank you for your grace upon our lives thank you for the blessing of the working the guidance and the strength that we are receiving from the holy spirit lord i want to pray that you continue to minister to us oh god as we continue to live in this world full of evil lord we need your strength win over evil with good lord may your word be fulfilled upon us for the glory and honor of your name and in jesus name we pray amen so read god's word romans chapter 12 from verse 9 to verse 21 this is what it says love must be sincere hate what is evil cling to what is good be devoted to one another in brotherly love Honor one another above yourselves never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the lord be joyful in hope patience in affliction faithful in prayer share with god's people who are in need practice hospitality bless those who persecute you bless and do not curse rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn live in harmony with one another do not be proud but be willing to associate with the people of low position do not be conceited do not repay anyone evil for evil but be careful do what is right in the eyes of everybody if it is possible as far as it is depends on you live at peace with everyone do not take revenge my friends but leave room for god's wrath for it is written it is mine to avenge i will repay says the lord On the contrary if your enemy is angry feed him if he is thirsty give him something to drink in doing this you will heap burning coal on his head do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good hallelujah dear brothers and sisters in christ understand that relationship is one of the important mysteries in living a successful life hallelujah how you relate with the people determines the kind of life you are going to live a meaningful relationship with the people and we need to first re- restore our relationship with god because god created us in his own image to always be in his presence and in his creator's principle of creation when everything remains where it was created to be there will be true joy 
there will be smooth running of daily activities. Like a fish was created to be in water. Trees were created to have their roots on the ground. Birds were created to be flying in the air. And human beings were created to be in the presence of God. When we restore our relationship with God, hallelujah, we'll be able to restore relationship with other people. But when our relationship with God is messed up, when we, are, we live a life of being separate from God, how can we relate with the people if we cannot relate well with our Creator who knows us better than anyone in this world? Hallelujah. And remember that we were once enemies with God. Romans chapter 5 verse 10 we saw. Let me read it once more. He says, For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Amen. We were once enemies with God. And somebody who is an enemy to God is a friend to the world, is a, is a slave to the devil. It's easy for that person to treat other people as if they are not human beings like him. If there is something to be taken, such a person may not care stepping even on other people's head to grab that which is for his or her own benefit. Such people are self-centered. And if we, are, we restore our relationship with God, if we live a life of worship, hallelujah, we'll be able to restore relationship, we'll be able to do it even in an easier way. Because the Holy Spirit will continue to help us, he'll continue to teach us, and he'll continue to guide us. Having been saved, we must live Within relationship with the people. Within and even outside the church. Hallelujah. Lasting and nourishing relationships thrives when the core of the relationship is Jesus Christ. Let the core of our relationship be our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us love people with the love of Jesus Christ. The unconditional love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we can be in a position to love even those who hate us. We're able to repay good after bad has been done to us. This is only possible for somebody who is enjoying the love of the Lord Jesus Christ in them. In Christ, may you be filled with wisdom to overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. Wisdom to overcome evil with good is only in Christ. And I bless you in the name of the Lord that this wisdom will fill each and every one of us even in this hour. Point number one. The nature of doing it first. I mean looking for reconciliation first. Trying to mend relationship First, being the first one, let's see verse 10 of Romans chapter 12. It says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Honoring one another, honoring other people above yourself will move you to be the first one, to take the first initiative. To mend broken relationships. Hallelujah. And understand that God created us different. Differently. Each and every person is different. Each and every person is God's masterpiece. A different people gather in church. People with different personalities gather in church. If you do not understand this, you will have Conflicts with people every now and then. And in Christ Jesus, we need to be reminded that we are one. And Christ is the head 
of the church and every individual member of the church is needed and we need to raise one another up and even help those who are weak because we are one body in Christ. And it is certain strategy to cause people to be caught up in their own pride. And when somebody is caught up in his or her own pride, they cannot have oneness with other believers. But in the name of the Lord, be the first to show the gesture for reconciliation even when there are weak or broken relationship. Saturn uses pride. That pride in you. You need to let go. You need to throw it away and confess like Paul. Galatians 2.20 I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. Life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. With that kind of understanding, with that kind of a viewpoint, you will be the first one to say sorry even when you are the one who is wronged. Hallelujah. And reconciling with your brother and sister is more important than your offering, than your sacrifice. Yes, your offering before God is important. But more important than that is you first reconciling with your brother or sister in Christ. And this is what our Lord Jesus Christ taught. Let's see the book of Matthew chapter 5. At verse 23 to verse 24, this is what it says. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and, recon and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. That is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. To show us more important that your gift is being reconciled to your brother, to your sister. And that's why I'm encouraging you and I'm challenging you. Be the first. Go first. Hallelujah. And be reconciled with your brother. When you think that your decision is always true. Your view is always the best. You're breaking relationship. And you're being deceived if you did not know. That's a deception of the devil. He plants pride. He plants thoughts of self-centeredness. So that he can break oneness among believers. Because he knows very well where people gather together in oneness. That's where the Lord commands his blessing. And the devil does not want to see blessings be commanded upon our lives. They will rebuke him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And may be defeated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. People may say what they want to say. It's their right to talk. As I once told you, their mouths are not only for eating, but also talking. And in their talking, sometimes they talk things that will wound you. Things that will cause scars in your life. But let's have this wide heart. That after receiving the love of God, we do not have the right to hate anyone. That is my view. And it's a biblical view. Having been loved by the Lord unconditionally, I don't have the right to hate anyone. Hallelujah. Instead, I continue to pray for them. Because sometimes they behave the way they behave. Because they do not know. They do not know who we are. 
They do not know me. They do not know you. And that's why they are treating you the way they have treated you. You are a child of God. Not everyone knows that you are a child of God. Not everyone knows that you are a servant of righteousness. Hallelujah. If you experience the love of God, then you can be the first person to say sorry. When love is lacking, even in relationships, everything will be treated with suspicion. Even when you do something good, that will be suspected. Maybe, they, maybe there is some hidden motive. Maybe there is an hidden agenda behind this thing that this person has done. But when there is love, hallelujah, God will continue to command his blessings and we can openly relate with one another because we are members of one body. We are parts of one body. The head of that body is Christ himself. Hallelujah. Point number two. The nature of being together. We need to uh, develop the nature of being together as believers. The Romans chapter 12, verse 14 to verse 16. This is what it says. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with the people of low position. Do not be conceited. Hallelujah. Rejoice with those who rejoice. I'm talking about the nature of being together. Together in oneness. As believers, as children of God. Born again. Citizens of heaven. Hallelujah. How are you developing the nature of being together? Hallelujah. How are you blessing those who persecute you? How are you cursing them? The Bible tells us bless and do not curse. Hallelujah. I have tried to practice this. Without the grace of God, it's not possible. Let's say, for example, you, you're driving and then other drivers break traffic rules. Do you bless them or do you curse them immediately? There's so much cursing that goes on, in, on, on roads. And I've seen that. But the Bible tells us, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. And mourn with those who mourn. I've seen some evil under the sun. Where people and anybody is ready to mourn with you when you are mourning. But when you start rejoicing, some people start withdrawing. Because they are jealousy. Maybe somebody saw you from a certain economic status last year. Now he meets you and finds you in a different level. Instead of rejoicing with you, they become jealousy. But the world is challenging us. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Mourn with those who are mourning. Hallelujah. It pleases God. Because... Jealousy does not come from God. It is a scheme and a tool of the devil. And it will eat you up if you allow it in your life. Get rid of it and be ready to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Hallelujah. Those who fall into problem of jealousy, they are self-centered. They want every good things to be for them. So when they see some good, uh, better things in their brother or their sister, instead of rejoicing with them, they become jealousy. Word tells us, verse 16, Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Again, 
Pride comes from the devil. And pride comes before the fall. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with the people of low position. Do not be conceited. Verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everybody. Hallelujah. Even non-believers, live in peace with them. Because if you don't live in peace with them, how will you ever evangelize to them? And we are here for the sake of spreading Jesus' life. To people who are dead spiritually. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Do not take revenge, my friends. But leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And verse 20. On the contrary, if your enemy is angry, feed them. Have you fed some of your enemies? The Bible says, if your enemy is angry, feed them. Feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will hear burning coal on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. As overcome evil with good, it pleases the Lord. Hallelujah. And to be able to do that, we need to cultivate a passion within us. Everyone has a passion. That fire within you. But most of people's passion are sleeping. Stir up that passion in you. A passion to win over evil with good. And your life will be pleasing before our Father in heaven. May the Lord bless his word. And may this word be fulfilled upon your life. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you. We give you all the glory because within your grace, we are going to overcome evil with good. May your word be fulfilled upon this church. And upon all the viewers who are joining us through YouTube. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Hi, this is Reverend Simon Kyoko of Mombasa Mission Church. Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, kindly like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. You can also share with your friend so that they can also be blessed as you have been blessed. And if you happen to be within Mombasa on a Sunday, you are welcome to our worship services. We are gathering in Likoni every Sunday from 9.30 in the morning. God bless you so much. Amen. Mombasa Mission Church, preaching the word, nurturing disciples.